everybody. Um, today I'm doing a different style of video. Uh, basically what I want to do is I want to be able to recap the month of January because I try so many different recipes and there are some misses but I feel like I have found a lot of hits but if you um, are not if you don't have as much time to like experiment with recipes as much as maybe I do or you just don't like experimenting I want to be able to just give you like the best of the best of the recipes that I've tried for the month of January as well as some of my other like favorite like food items or different things that I've discovered um, hopefully to save you guys time and also honestly it's because I want to talk more about some of these recipes so you guys know how good it is because because honestly I want to eat more of it and I want you to enjoy it too right I want us all to pretend like I can't cook for everybody and you guys can't come over to my place, you know, so I can make you guys try out all, all these things. So this is as close as I can get to doing so. Um, okay, so let's start. We are going to do the recipes now. I made myself narrow down to my top three recipes of the month and it was hard and I wanted to like give myself a challenge of like the best because I really, really, really want to make sure that this recap is going to be like the best of the best of the month. Okay, let me start off with what I think was the best. The Kahlua pork. So, a couple, uh, a while ago, I made the Kahlua pork. It was a Skinny Taste recipe, so from the website, Skinny Taste, I believe her name is Gina, the person who, um, the person who made it, and it is so, so so simple now I was on the blue plan at the time and uh, it, it is points heavy but it was worth it because number one it was so easy and it was one of those things where like I had to get rid of it because it was just too much that I could eat before it would get bad and I am so sad that I could not eat it more because it was so good um, it was so tender and it was it was simple it was three ingredients and it paired so I I had it with rice I'm a huge rice person I absolutely love rice and so I just had it with rice and it was like so warm and comforting in this month of January that just lasted forever you know it was just it was perfect it was awesome I will be making it again when I could figure out how to like when I want when I could save my points for dinner basically so so tasty and it made a lot and I think it's actually very budget friendly too because pork is generally a little bit cheaper and it made so much uh yeah so that was probably my favorite thing um this my second favorite or of the top three is an Emily Bites recipe you know I love what she does I would I would love to just understand how her brain works because she makes some great recipes for Weight Watchers um, and she made the pimento cheese chicken salad. Now, I hadn't, I've never had chicken salad before. I've heard it, but I just didn't think it was for me because it didn't, like, personally, I don't think chicken salad looks that appealing. It doesn't look that great to me. But I made it in, like, a hot sandwich. So basically, it was like a grilled cheese, but the chicken pimento was, like, in between my two slices of whole wheat bread and oh my goodness the flavor the creaminess unbelievable unbelievable now i am a chicken salad newbie maybe all chicken salad is that good i don't know if it is let me know but it was incredible it was so easy i had plenty to be able to like make it last for multiple days and i cannot stop thinking about i think it's going to be great for in the summer i think in the summertime i'm going to try it as like a cold sandwich or even just like spooning it out with like a cracker or something you know um because i want to try cold i haven't tried it cold i only tried it hot because it was so good i was like i don't i don't understand it it was just perfect and filling and awesome okay so the next is another emily bites recipe okay no surprise here and it was the baked hot barbecue chicken tenders i don't 
I was so surprised with how crispy and crunchy that the chicken got by baking it. Like it was it was almost like it was like a chicken like a chicken tender that you would get out of like a frozen bag or whatever that was already breaded and stuff. And then the sauce was good because like, I'm not a huge, huge barbecue, like traditional barbecue sauce fan. I'm a ranch dressing kind of girl for sure. Um, and, and anyway, um, the, the chick, the sauce, because it was like spicy. So you had like the Frank's Buffalo sauce, which I love like mixed with that barbecue sauce it was simple and it was so tasty and it was really really surprising this is another recipe that i think could translate well into like the spring or warmer months too which i'm uh those those were the good so those were my top three recipes below i will have um i will ask eric to please link the videos where i make these for you so you could see how easy yeah these were all easy recipes, and but the flavors were phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So please go and check those out. Don't sleep on them because they are awesome. Okay, so the next category of things that I wanna talk about are like food products or items that I'm really loving. So these are things that, they're not like recipes, you know, they're individual things. Um, excuse me, gotta get it. All right, this is the first one. The Thomas Whole Wheat English Muffin, the light English muffin. Um, oh, the, it's the 100 calories. Sorry for the lighting. The 100 calorie version of it. I before Weight Watchers, I really was not a huge like English muffin fan, honestly, because I was just like, how could you get better than sourdough toast? Still. I'm still saying this, how could you get better than sourdough toast, but I have to be careful with how much sourdough toast I have because I could, you do not want to know how much sourdough bread I could eat. Um, so I really did not have a lot of English muffins, but I was just like, I wanted to try different things that would kind of like wake up my breakfast because I'm not a huge breakfast person and I can't eat eggs and I can't really eat yogurt either. And um, so, so I'm just trying different things because it, uh, my stomach does not do well with those things. And so I tried one of these, there are three points, uh, with some, the PB, PB powder thing that I mixed up together with a banana and breakfast or a snack. It is so filling and so delicious. And this is different than just, like for whatever reason, I don't know what is so different, but this is so much better than doing it on like toast, how I was doing, like just on whole wheat, the 45 calorie Sara Lee bread that I was doing. This is way better. I don't, I can't explain it. I just, you know what? I think it has something to do with the texture that it's so good, but it's really delicious, really filling, and it's an awesome, awesome way to start off your morning. I really like it for breakfast. Okay. I'm just going to set this behind me. Ah, there we go. Okay, so another food item that I want to show you is this seasoning. It is cowboy barbecue rub. So honestly, this is something that Eric picked up just to try to season his chicken because he loves having like chicken breast with like blue cheese dressing. Blue cheese, not for me. Um, and he got this and he liked it, but I don't know why, he didn't love it. So um, so anyway, so I was like, I'll try it. And let me tell you the ingredients in it just because I don't know, this is the Spice Hunter. I don't even remember where we got it. But let me tell you the ingredients so you guys can see if you have something similar to it. So it's chili pepper, garlic, onion, black pepper, cilantro, cumin, oregano, basil, cinnamon, cloves, and red pepper. It is phenomenal i really really like this this is something that i just like to season my chicken with and honestly if i'm being lazy like this is so good because it adds a lot of flavor and you could just pour it over chicken breast i also really like it when i'm cooking like uh in a slow cooker i'm like throwing some old frozen chick not old but like frozen chicken breast in there and then i season it with this and i could use it theoretically for salads but you know me and salads we don't really like each other that much unless you're from chipotle but um 
for for like sandwiches or wraps or something like this i think this flavors the chicken really really well and i like it so if you could find something similar to this and it says it's zero calories um for this please go ahead and try because i think it is great all right, so I just have two items for that category. And then um, I also wanted to talk to you guys about something in like the beauty category. I'm definitely like not an expert, but I do enjoy, um, do enjoy things. So what I want to show you guys is something for your lips. So, mm. okay, was that awkward? That felt awkward. <laughs> anyway, um, I really like this color. I don't, um, here, let me show you what it is. It is actually like a chapstick and it's so cheap. So this is the Nivea Blackberry Lip Care. It feels so good and I feel like it has totally, totally helped with my uh, winter lips, you know, because I don't think I'm the only one that gets, I hope not, crusty <laughs> lips during the winter time. But, um, so it makes my lips feel good and I think it, here, let me stop talking. I think it gives a little bit of color, right? So it's a little bit of something, but it feels, it just feels more hydrating than just like something else. So I really like it. Warning though, or not warning, maybe I learned something about, yes, I learned something about myself when trying this out. I think I might put on chapstick like a crazy person because how I put on chapstick normally I just smear it. I, I don't, and apparently I didn't realize that I get it like all over, like there's a good circle on. And let me show you something so you can imagine what happens. Do you guys see? This is what this chapstick looks like. So that is some color, right? Okay, there we go. That is some color. And so you cannot just go like, like, I'm not actually going here. I'll put it on like this, you know, like I would go mm, like that basically when I, is how I would normally do my chapstick. Uh, yeah, you don't want to have this color and go in like this because then you will look like you are three years old getting into your mom's makeup, which is what I did the first time that I tried this on. So you actually have to like look at what you're doing for it, but I think it's worth it because honestly, if I'm just home like working, I have this by me and I'll just go like this and then sometimes Eric makes fun of me. But anyway, feels great and I love it and it's cheap. I couldn't, um, not I couldn't, this came, I got this in a four pack off of Amazon for like a stocking stuffer because, um, well, I know, I know who got it for me and where they got it for me. Uh, and I think this has the, this Blackberry one, I think this has the best color. But if you want to try it in the four pack, I think it was really cheap, which is awesome. So if we could find it, I will have Eric, uh, put a link to it below. But if not, it's, it's, I think it's a drugstore brand, so it should be fine. Um, all right, so I also want to share with you guys like a home organizational thing that has helped so, so, so much. Now this isn't revolutionary, but this is the first time we have implemented it. We got ourselves a whiteboard calendar and it is big and I am obsessed. So I, I think you guys actually might have seen, uh, see me talk about this or whatever but i've been really really eric and i have been really using this a lot so this is how we organize our um our youtube videos here but um but you could totally use it for anything so what i like about it is is i like that you aren't constrained to like like you can make your months however you want it. So like we did this on the 19th of January. This is when we started it or when we did it. Um, and so, so that, so most calendars, like you have to start at like one, you know, the first day, you know? So, but sometimes that doesn't like, that doesn't work for us or we want it to kind of be rolling and things like this. So this is such a good visual reminder. And I love whiteboards. I feel like whenever I get my own house, like there's going to be, and, and if we have kids, everybody's going to have whiteboards. They're going to have multiple whiteboards. We, I, is there whiteboard paint? I should just paint my walls and whiteboards. So I, 
Oh, I might really look crazy like this. Anyway, um, I really, really like using this. It's so helpful. I, I just like this better than traditional calendars. I don't know why. I just... I just do but this is awesome we got ours at staples but honestly on um, a couple of weeks ago i saw something very similar in the top in the target like dollar section where i think i saw one very similar and it was like five dollars i was like oh i wish i waited like this is pretty and all because it has the gold foil and it's like i could save myself like 15 dollars or something like that but anyway it's pretty and i've been using it before that so i'm not who cares, right? If you're using it, you're using it. Okay, so next thing that I want, next category that I want to talk about is I want to talk about entertainment. Um, because I go through phases where I read a lot and I want to tell you about something that I love. So I actually read quite a few good books, but this is my favorite. Da 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 da. It is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. So this is like a young adult book, um, but it is very, very, it's written very well. And I am, I'm a, I would consider myself a pretty critical reader and I'm not that easy to please in some aspects, but something that I really, oh, do you want to know what it is about before I just start spouting? Uh, I should probably tell you. So basically what it is, it is a, retelling of the Alice in Wonderland story but it's almost like the origin story of the Queen of Hearts um, so obviously there is a lot of like Lewis Carroll influence but there is also some Disney influence for sure a lot of the visuals for Disney um, this was incredible because you know what it was it was the plot it was a really good plot i had i had a hard time figuring out the ending and it had me guessing toward towards the end like how because obviously we know the ending right we know what the queen of queen of hearts how who, who she is and her character is in the Queen of Hearts if we've seen the Alice in Wonderland movie by Disney. And so it's very interesting because this main character is really likable. You know, she's a she's well-written character. She's really likable. Um, and so I think she did a great job. There's two aspects I think she did a great job. First of all, in making us really like this character, but also having, I think, a pretty logical explanation as to how she gets to be the way that she is in the movie uh, that I think was re really really well done the second thing that I really admired about this book was the like whimsical or fantastical elements I am a little boring in that in that aspect where even though I'm like a big Disney girl I like to have like strong border, strong bow, like boundaries. I like my world. I like to have a rule. Um, when I read a book or watch a movie or anything, I like to get involved in a world that has specific boundaries or rules that I could understand. And that means that a lot of like whimsical books or even some fantasy books can be difficult for me because I feel like if they break like a rule that they set up in the world previously it's like i'm out i can't deal with this and so this alice in wonderland is or the alice story is very very whimsical and honestly the movie not one of my favorites um because of partially of the whimsical thing but this is just so well done and there's definitely that whimsy aspect but it's written in such a way where i am not turned off at all so that that's huge for me huge huge and i can't wait so i'm reading a lot a lot of young adult to be able to talk to my niece about she's getting older and she's into these things and so i'm so excited to like gush with her about this book because i'm 90 percent sure she's read it or she is currently reading it so that'll be so much fun okay the next favorite thing that i want to tell you about are some things that I am listening to. Um, so I finished listening to a book. It is called 
Big Magic. I rented it through my library on the Libby app. And it's by, oh, I believe her name, is it Elizabeth Gilbert? I could be wrong. She was the writer of Eat, Pray, Love. I've actually never read, or is that a movie too? I don't know. If it's a movie, never seen it. Book, never read it. Um, I just haven't. Maybe one day I will. But anyway, so what this book is about, it's a short audio book and, and the author reads it herself, which I so appreciate it. And it's really taking us through the process of her perspective of what it means to live a creative life and all of the like challenges about it and then also some of the positive things and it's and it's awesome i think it's really good it was very encouraging to me because i i live a creative life but and she like she i like how she defines creativity like by not putting it in like the stereotypical like artistic things when you think of creative you think of more artistic things but she also says like she also makes sure to include like no it's like the inventors basically anybody who is creating something so if you like to create something whether that's like math algorithms science i don't know that part's out of my world you know it's like if you like to create something Th that book is for you and I really liked it because obviously I love to create like I have like it's one of my joys is to create things um it's what my business is about it's part of this YouTube is creating and sharing different things with people um so it was really encouraging to me so if you are looking for an audiobook and that sounds interesting I'd recommend it okay this is completely different but now I want to tell you about a podcast I literally laughed out loud while listening to. I've been a, a fan of podcasts for over a decade now. I I cannot stop. I absolutely adore them. But I realize everybody has their like own podcast style that they listen to and I love when it just feels like not not overly like not overly produced at all. I want to feel like I am in the room with some of my friends and I'm just have like laryngitis and I can't talk but it's my friends talking about whatever and so I absolutely love the podcast straight up with Stassi this is Stassi Schroeder from Vanderpump Rules and even if you don't watch this show you might think she's funny now once again there are so many things like her life is so different and there's so many things that's so different about her but I just get the feeling of like authenticity when I listen to her podcast which I love and so she in 2018 she did a podcast where she was like interviewing talking to Spencer Pratt of the Hills and them together guys it was it was one of the funniest things I've listened to or like I I feel like I haven't felt like that sense of humor and that laughter in such a long time it was hilarious now once again i definitely love the hills like i watched it i didn't watch the new season because i think it was on like mtv or something i don't know a channel i didn't have or i didn't really have access to um and so i haven't watched the new season but like back in the day I really like the hills so like I knew Spencer and what his story was and all these different things and then I Vanderpump Rules I absolutely adore so so the two personalities it was really really interesting so um yeah I loved it um and then the next category for entertainment is what I am watching so I'm not watching oh wait I am okay I I'm gonna Last minute, I'm going to throw into something. I'm getting back into The Bachelor. So I didn't even finish the last season of Bachelor in Paradise just because it was annoying me how much of the drama stemmed from all the stagecoach thing. If you, you know, if you know, um, all the stagecoach things. Um, yeah, it was driving me nuts because I wanted to like see the drama and I just felt like there were a lot of missing holes. So I got annoyed I didn't even finish it. And so when The Bachelor started up, I was like, eh, not, not doing that. But then I, I think it was like four episodes in, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I want to watch. And I was like staying up late working. So I was like, okay, I gotta, I, I gotta watch something. The Bachelor like will keep me up and keep me awake. I just tried it. 
and this season is funny this the the producers are like i feel in my opinion i feel like the producers aren't even trying to hide the fact that they're trying to create like drama or funny situations and it's like it's tv we, i think everybody knows that is that they're making a show for entertainment purposes like yeah i do believe that the friendships are real that the romantic relationships could be real you know but that doesn't mean that we have to be bored watching it and so there are some funny moments so i'm totally watching the bachelor so into it so way into it which is good because like after bachelor in paradise i needed it to i needed a good season and i think this season so far is really good um and then on youtube i have been watching jessica o'donohue O'Donohue. so uh it is jessica makes a lot of like lifestyle and cooking and the reason why i like watching her channel is just her and her husband are just the sweetest you the, just the sweetest sweetest couple and just so do you do you remember when i don't know if you watched it but it, do you remember when like fixer upper was on and just the feeling you got like watching chip and joanna or at least the feeling i got like like i just felt good after watching an episode and just like happy and they have a very very similar kind of energy about them and they do a lot of cooking shows they're not like most of the recipes are not healthy or weight watchers or anything but i don't care just because it's like like they're just the kind of couple or the kind of people that you want to root for and you want to like support and do well just because because they're just so like joyful and positive which is awesome so i really 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 would recommend checking out their channel um it's so i think it's so so great um and then the last section or the last category i'm going to talk about is my favorite memory for the month my favorite memory for the month is definitely started the first day was our trip to san diego eric and i took kind of a last minute spur of the moment one day trip down to san diego and on the first day uh or on january 1st 2020 we did like i think it's the tandem bike or the like i don't know the bike where you're sitting you're not in front of each other you're like side to side and eric did not want to do it he was like he was just not into it he wasn't into it but i was like i want to do what i want to do please you want to you know then it was like the Oh, you don't I, anyway so he ended up doing it uh with me and we had so much fun it was a gorgeous day and he was like making fun of me because even though i run like the bike was really hard and he was like and i was like my legs are shaking and stuff and we had no idea like where we were going because like the bike path was all like it was marked but i I felt like they did construction or something like that so we we're like oh we don't know where we're going or whatever it was just really really funny and it just was like a re it made me it reminded me of why i love my husband so much because like he can totally be stubborn for sure so can i but he is like he just wants to just have a good time and he wants to spend so much time with me and so even if he doesn't want to do something he will nine times out of ten maybe even more like 99 out of 100 times like give it a try and he will he wants he wants it to work out and he wants to have like fun with me and he totally did have fun with me even though if like that bike riding thing wasn't his thing but i think it might be our thing that we do because it was just it's just so fu it i don't know why it's funny it is it's just funny to me um yeah okay so before i wrap this up i want to say that this style of video is absolutely 100 percent um inspired by my friend here on youtube blair lamb she isn't posting so so much so often right now because she's a new mom just so, such a sweet sweet little baby um and blair but the, she has so many great videos and blair and riley i are also such a good couple that i think you would really enjoy watching her videos so i will also have eric link her video or her youtube channel down below please future editing eric um yeah so i i don't know 
I thank you for letting me share. These are like, sometimes I feel like I just have all this like things that I'm excited about all bottled up and I just wanna like really, really like be able to emphasize things to you. So thank you for watching and letting me share what I'm excited about. Oh, and this scarf, I'm wearing this scarf on purpose because this scarf we made last year at, when we were at Disney World in Festival of the Arts is like this time last year. And this was one of my most special memories from last year at Disney World because this was so much fun for, for me to make and I really don't wear it that often. So, because I don't, I don't know how to wear it that often. All right, thank you. I will let you guys go. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button and a thumbs up would be great. And I will see you guys later. Bye.